the Batman by uh, Matt Reeves, Matthew Reeves or Reeves. Is that how you say it? Reeves. 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 Yeah, Reeves. Reeves. He's doing it. Um, word is starting. It comes out in less than a month now. And word is starting to leak, starting to come out on this movie. What it is. Uh, EW Entertainment Weekly. Eric Weber tweeted out recently that he received a text from a source who's seen the Batman calling it a complex film, comparing it to Zodiac, Chinatown, The Usual Suspects, Silence of the Lambs. The source also stating that it will be very controversial and people will be discussing it endlessly. There was a tweet that uh, preceded this uh, that, that went on to say that they heard it was, that a source told them that it was the best Batman film since the, or not since The Dark Knight, but the only Batman film ever to be better is The Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. um, so we look at these comments, Scotty. Aside from the fact that Matt Reeves told us that these films were his inf in inspiration going into making this movie, are there any takeaways that you have from this? And what what are you suspecting will be the controversial aspect of this film? Um, I think it's pretty telling that the Riddler character is obviously inspired by Zodiac. Uh, the The riddles actually fall right in line with Zodiac, so just the the scary aspect of him too uh the usual suspects it's just got this like crime thr really like deep gritty crime thriller uh feel to it i just heard the other day that actually the the car jump scene through the fire there's no cgi in that and that oh. when matt reeves originally like when he was originally conceiving that scene, he imagined like, you know, whatever fake explosions, I'm just going to make it happen. However we have to do it. And then he got on set and they were, and they were telling him like, no, we can, he's like, we can do this. <laughs> so that whole scene, there's no CGI. They jump the car through the explosion. But I think the controversy is really um, the Wayne's family. Like their whole, I think that their whole, um, empire their money was basically off the backs of gotham and now you have bruce wayne so uh self-righteously trying to defend a city that he basically made the way it is but they tried to kind of hint at that in the joker film too how uh thomas wayne is like just so corrupt that's true that's something that's been going on in the world of batman for a while steve controversial <laughs> You have two young uh, boys who will not be seeing this movie, but what do you take away from this <laughs> from this comment? Well, it's it's so weird for me to like think. I just went up to Walmart and could get the you know Lego Batman <laughs> movie kit for for this, and then you hear stuff like that. It's like, well, geez, I'm not letting my kids watch this at all. Uh, it's, 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 you know, their level is Lego Batman. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm I'm excited. It definitely, um, you know, anything they can do to kind of give it a different slant a little bit of a different direction uh from the previous entries i'm on board i i i don't mind the comment comparing it to or having it add up to the dark knight i do kind of hope that it's not this in the same vein of film as the nolan i love the nolan films don't get me wrong but you know try something new with the character let's see what's up i think that's what we're getting here one thing that really excites me about matt reeves doing this movie is dawn of the planet of the apes is like one of the greatest films and one of the greatest sequels that we've ever gotten hands down. And it's a sequel to a movie that he didn't make. And the one thing that I think that I really like that he's doing with the Batman is he's making this take place, I believe one year and six months or something like that into Batman, into Bruce Wayne becoming Batman. So he's been Batman for a year, year and a half at this point. So he's essentially making a sequel to a movie that doesn't exist, but a movie that, we all know the basis it's already played story. out in our heads. Yeah, yeah, we've already seen that movie, so it's he's kind of doing the same thing. And if he could, and if he was able to succeed so well at the Apes, I'm I'm having a lot of faith that he'll be able to do it here as well with who what he is he has described as his favorite comic book character of all time. A movie that he he was dying to make. A movie that he got a script for Scotty from the Ben Affleck script, comparing it to a James Bond thing said he could not make that. So I got to ask you, cause I know you are a uh, big Ben Affleck Batman. I'm making this up. You probably aren't. I'm no, but I, that, I, I know, think I, Ben's one of the better Batmans. I, I agree. But do you think that we are getting, do you think we are getting screwed over as fans right now with this Batman 
or is this the better of the options? Or should they just uh, release the Affleck cut? I mean, there's not really, there's nothing saying that we won't ever get a Batfleck trilogy, honestly. Like, Ben was going through some things at that time. I don't know if anyone's paying attention, but he's kind of on the up. He's like kind of got some wins under his belt now. So, you know, time will tell the success of this Batman film could influence his decisions. Um, I think the the main reason in my mind why this Batman is going to be so good is that it's like year one and a half, year two Batman. We The reason why I personally don't think that even The Dark Knight is up there in like I enjoyed those movies, but as far as continuity and story, they tried to go the Raza Ghoul route and like he was trained like this and that. Like casual fans don't know that side of Batman really at all unless you've watched the animated movies. So the bat the Battenson version of Batman is going to be the Batman that we're all familiar with. And um all the past movies had the tension with him and Catwoman. They're gonna that's all going to be uh, come to fruition in this. And the fact that it's a trilogy and the first movie's three hours, like <laughs> right, we're getting like the Lord of the Rings of freaking Batman, honestly. And they already have a spinoff show, Gotham PD. Like that and show's already going to be attached. Yeah. And Colin Farrell, like he looks ridiculous, dude. Yeah. Amazing. I'm already at, I'm already at 10 out of 10. I haven't even seen it yet. T- tickets on sale on um, Thursday. Tickets going yes. sale on Thursday for this movie. So get yeah. your little Caesar pizza, Steve. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My Batman Calzone, yeah. You can, sm- you can Calzone. smuggle that into the theater. And just put the whole pizza in. <laughs> yeah, they're, say- it over. <laughs> they're saying that they're, they're thinking that this could go anywhere between, I think, 130, I think it's 130, 150 to 185 million opening weekend. Is that... I don't I look, dude. That's a lot of hype. Hey, that's a lot of money to live mm. up to. I know Sp- Spider Man. I think is is not even a fair comparison because we all knew what we were getting in Spider Man, right? We knew we were getting the three Spider Man. We all wanted to see mm-hmm. them return. We wanted to see Doc Ock back. We, got, we wanted multiverse. We wanted all of that. And there was a you know what else is coming through? You don't know. There was a lot there. Whereas this is. Here's a Batman movie, an isolated Batman movie <clears throat> that is three hours at the somewhere in the middle to the end. I don't know where we are in the pandemic. Three hours in the movie theater right now. I, I, I hesitate to see how many people are going to go do that multiple times. I don't remember how long Spider Man was. It was it was around two and a half though, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Spider Man was pretty. Yeah, it's still pretty long. Plus, yes, think. that's pretty long. 250, yeah, I think it was up there. Was man. it that long? I oh, think wow. it was. I gotta so, look it up again. But yeah, so for me, the only thing going working against there's two things working against against this movie to make that much money. And I want to know what you guys think. Is first of all yeah. uh, that it's it's isolated film. Like I said, it is Batman, but it's isolated. There's no Superman, no Wonder Woman, blah blah. But also, it's way way darker in tone. I, there's also words coming out that the scenes there are funny scenes, but you look at these trailers, they're not. They're not pushing the comedy. They're not really mm-hmm. pushing. They're not pushing fun. They're pushing awesome and detective, mm-hmm. but they're not pushing family friendly fun. So, Steve, how do you feel about 185 million? Is this a is this a hard no from you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll give it. To, I don't know. I, I, I'm on the fence on that one. To be honest with you, the uh, it's a. Uh, I'm just afraid there might be over, not over hyping it, but overdoing it. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I don't. Know, being here in Canada, the theaters aren't even, you know, they're, they're, they're slowly yeah. opening back up. There's still a lot of hesitation for me to go see it in the theater. Um, like for me, I might have to wait a month or two just to see if the, 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 the theaters go down a little bit. I don't know. I think, I think they're setting themselves up for sure. And it's going to be hard to, it's going to be hard to live up to that. Yeah, man, it's tough. Uh, Venom and Eternals were both 70 opening and they're like, second highest during all of this what did shang chi um, open at yeah let me check Ooh. that because i think that one did all right right because eternals they were saying was like the first flop and that one didn't do well critically and i oh, are we yeah, getting 200 uh, shang chi was 200 so oh really oh God. yeah now the best visual effects that's insane yeah good for them 
Mm-hmm. Marvel, you know, that was after Black Widow, but that was a whole thing. Also, same yeah. day release on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this one that Eternals, movie was out of, review- that was a movie out of time. Yeah, there. Yeah, that one had some stumbling blocks. Of, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just like anyway, but I, I hesitate to see how much this one can make. I'm I can't wait to see about it. it is Batman. Everyone loves Batman. Everyone loves Batman. I think as time goes on with Marvel being Marvel, that might slowly fade out. But there's there's something about the Batman character that everyone is drawn to and can't wait to go see. And I just think, you know, they should remake the Adam West Batman. Yeah. Point. Yeah. <laughs> Flash, Bring Flash everybody point, in, yeah. man. <laughs> Give uh, in. Ben Affleck Superman. Forget about it. <laughs> exactly. Nic- Nicholas Cage Superman. That I remember when that Let's movie go. was I, I remember in the nineties when I was in high school and they announced that movie and I was like, this is so, so weird. <laughs> Shoot your I didn't shot, want to bring I say. <laughs> <laughs> why not? We, the, here's here's the thing though, is that we just talked about Batgirl. That's gonna be on HBO Max. You have HBO Max. And you know the 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 David Ayer Suicide Squad just release this crap. No, the Joel Schumacher cut. Just release all of these things. You have the platform for it. If it gets people to to subscribe to your streaming service, why wouldn't you do it? More content, uh, the better. I think that's a conversation for another day, though, because I know you could go for hours on the. I stand. (laughs) I stand the air cut. I want the air cut so bad, and he talks about it all the time, dude. All the time. I feel the pain. Yeah, it, Just release it already. <laughs> yeah, he says that it's like a like it's not even like a little bit here and there. It's a completely different movie. As, and as a, not to drag it out, but how do people not believe him after what we just went through with the Snyder Cut? How do you not believe yeah. this guy? The uh, you know? the irony of it all though was that they kind of changed it after Guardians of the Galaxy and then they made a sequel kind of and got the director of Guardians yes, of the Galaxy. Dude. <laughs> they got the movie they they got the movie they they ended up wanting without even realizing realizing. We got to talk about one more thing with Batman before we move on though. Is, is well, there real, are rumors? You, yeah, you were hit you, real quick too because you were hitting on the Batgirl stuff and like Keaton's in that he's the Batman and it's a brand new universe. Or like it's well, supposed to be his, like, or they don't know, or it's because of Flash. <laughs> it's going to be because of Flash, but it's J.K. Yeah. Simmons as Commissioner Gordon. So yeah, that's so that it's a different Commissioner kind of Gordon from. Yeah, it's a different Commissioner Gordon from this one. Different Commissioner Gordon from his movies. However, J.K. Simmons could be playing the Commissioner Gordon from the Michael Keenan movies. Um, what's that actor's name? Michael. Oh yeah, you're right. Alluding me now, he, like I, him a little bit. Actually. But I believe he. He passed away, I believe, also. So mm-hmm. it's you know your options are limited there. Michael Keaton's also seventy, so yeah. <laughs> Commissioner Gordon from his would be really old anyway. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know. That one's strange, um, but it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be fun. You just give Flash, let us do his thing, and like we were saying, the Joker got to do what it wanted. Let these movies do it what they want. Speaking of Joker, though, Scotty, is Joker showing up in this movie? Are they getting uh, uh, Barry? Not Keegan? the first one. Not in the first no, one. He's not showing up in this one. I don't think they'll put him in it at all. Uh, or if they do, it's a post credit. But I've heard people theorize they think when the jail uh, thing's going up that it's not the Riddler and that's going to be the guy playing Joker. So it feels a lot like Hush. I don't know if you ever saw Batman Hush, but it's going to be Batman trying to figure out which one of his rogue gallery of villains is actually behind this. Well, that's here's a question. The controversial part of this, Steve, what if the Riddler is not the big, big bad? I can see that. Yeah, that's uh, and I'm not saying necessarily the Joker. I think the Joker's been outplayed. We could talk to Andrew Fantasia about that. He thinks the Joker's been outplayed. But what if the Riddler is the Riddler? And I, you know, it could be the Court of Owls or the Wayne, something bigger is going on. But what if the Riddler is like this like middle level threat in a lot of like he thinks he's bigger than he is, but you have like a Joker who's who can one up him and maybe the Riddler is taking claim for things that have been done by other villains. Yeah. Just to try to mess so with the lame Batman. as I said it. Just... Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be a whole part of the riddle is like if he's if he is doctoring up these crime scenes to make it look like they were committed by people he knows and that's forcing him to go take them out or you know maybe the riddler's plan is to be the only uh the only crime 
boss out there or something. Because I, I think I believe that it was rumor that when it was first coming on Matt Reeves, there was some talk of there being like a whole like rogues gallery of villains. And I believe initially, and this reason people have kind of like stopped talking about it, but there was supposed to be something like seven villains in this movie, seven Batman villains. So you have Riddler, Catwoman, Penguin, Falcone. I heard that. And that leaves uh, three or two, if six or seven was the answer. So then Scarecrow Scare- guy, I think, was mentioned. May- maybe Scarecrow, mm-hmm. maybe Harvey Dent, Joker. Uh, like, and you know the, the whole weird, rogues thing that makes a lot dropped. of sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, um, I didn't mean to cut you off, but the the rogues gallery thing makes a lot of sense if they're gonna do this uh, cop spinoff show. You know, they're gonna be dealing with some of the lower like underling guys out there. Victor yeah. Zaz, he's one of my favorites <laughs> from that Gotham show. He was crazy, dude. That dude's not out of his mind. <laughs> it's, Steve, you said that the aesthetic of this kind of reminds you of Gotham, the show. Well, I did, especially in the um, uh, the the police uh, in the police center. Uh, it just looked a lot like uh, how it was presented in Gotham, um, which I'm okay with. That, that had a definitely had its own unique uh, visual style, and um, none of the movies have ever really gone that way. So I'm okay with it. What did you think of the Penguin in that show? I was a huge mark for their depiction of Riddler. To me, that's like that was the definitive Riddler for me. Um, so the penguin, I, I like that they didn't take the route from before. Um, they kind of put their own spin on it. Um, but yeah, for me, just Riddler to be just stole that show. Um, mm-hmm. he was the one that, uh, I that, really that I liked the, I really enjoyed the spin that they did on the penguin and how he yeah. was like beat up the whole time. And then eventually just took over that actor is really good too. Do you think that the, that the penguin in this is going to be similar to the penguin from Gotham? Obviously the Riddler is looks not his character is nothing at all what the Riddler was in Gotham, but the Penguin, there's really only one way to tell that story of the Penguin, right? The rise up to power and mm-hmm. I think that, and apparently in this also, he doesn't like being called the Penguin. Hmm. I get Love the that. sense of this one. The, the Penguin is already established. He's probably on his way out as Riddler or Joker or whoever's pu- pulling the strings is kind of pushing Penguin out of his position of power. I just, out. Yeah, I think so. I could see that. What if he's pushing him in? <laughs> he seems like a desperate man in the trailer too. When he's like, thinks he got the Batman and he's like all like all amped up. Seems like yeah. he's taking risks. And that's why I'm saying, what if, what if, and I just got this idea because what he says, Steve, but what if it's the other way around and the Riddler is saying like, this is, you know, we put this. We, oh, like if you take the Batman and- out. Yeah, and like that's how it's being used, and then he knows that the penguin can't hold his own as a crime lord. So then the, all that crime is going to go the way of the dodo, and because uh, mm. the Riddler seems to like Riddler and Batman seem to be on the same trajectory of cleaning up Gotham, but one is doing it psychotically, and the other one's doing it also psychotically, but dressed as a bat and won't kill people. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it seems to be seems to be going. I like that theory a lot, actually. If he's purposefully, like we were saying, purposefully making the Batman target these people while at the same time having the Penguin go after Batman, basically making them take each other out. It's going to it's gonna be a fun ride of a movie. Let's move on now. 